So how many of you recognize this guy? Raise your hand if you know who this is. Oh, I just got a lot of you excited. You, you think this, food's, this speech is going to be about food. It's not, unfortunately. But this is one of my favorite guys on television. This is Chef Robert Irvine from the show Restaurant Impossible. It's a great show. In the show, Chef Robert and his crew come into a failing restaurant. And in just two days, they completely make over the restaurant. They make over the menu, they work with the staff, and they give the restaurant an entire new interior design. I'm always amazed how much they're able to get done in just two days. Now again, by a show of hands, how many of you recognize this guy? It's funny standing up here and asking that question. I think every, every woman in the audience, their hand shot straight up <laughs> right when I got to him. This, of course, is Ty Pennington. He's the host of the show. Uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. It's a similar type of, content, of concept. In this show, Ty and his crew uh, renovate an entire house for a needy family in a week. In fact, in some episodes, they build an entire house from scratch in a week. Think about that. That never happens in real life. Why is that? I can tell you it never happens in real life because we see examples of it every day. And in fact, there's few things in life that I loathe more than road construction. How many times have you been driving down a freeway and it all of a sudden goes from three lanes to one lane, traffic snarled, everyone slows to a halt, and it goes this way for miles and miles, and the entire time you're driving, you're looking at all these torn up lanes on the side, and you say, why is nobody working? What's going on here? And it's not just way, this way one day, it's this way for weeks and months at a time. And this, these road projects, they go on for years and years and years with no end in sight. But what really makes me mad is when these road construction projects affect local businesses. When road construction tears up businesses, it severely impacts those businesses. In fact, there was a study done in the state of Wisconsin that showed that 54% of local businesses that were impacted by a road construction project never recovered. They were never able to get their revenue back to the same level that it was prior to the construction project beginning. This is such a problem that the city of Madison actually put together a road construction survival guide, a book that they give out to local businesses that are gonna be affected by a road construction project telling them how best to survive through the construction. Now, I applaud the city of Madison for doing something proactive like this, but it, I have to wonder, why is this even necessary in the first place? How come we watch these TV shows and we're able to see an entire restaurant renovated in two days, an entire house built from scratch in one week, yet in the real world, these construction projects go on with no end in sight? But it's not just construction. Projects in every industry, probably including in the industry that you're in, that you're in go on seeming, seemingly forever. It's difficult to get projects to a successful conclusion. My industry, the IT industry, is notoriously bad at this. In fact, there was a study done last year which showed that software development projects that were managed in a traditional method came in on time, on budget, and with all planned features 14% of the time. That means that 86% of the time, software projects are going to either be late or over budget or missing features or some combination thereof. Those are statistics that even make the construction guys mad. <laughs> I run a company called 352. 352 is a digital agency. We build complex websites, software, and marketing campaigns for countries around the globe. And we too have unfortunately seen our fair share of projects drag on like this. In fact, 2011 was a particularly difficult year for us. Sales were actually doing great. In fact, we almost doubled our revenue in 2011 and we were furiously hiring employees to keep up with it. We grew from 39 employees at the beginning of 2011 to close to 70 employees by the time the year was over. But with every new sale we made, every little bit of revenue we added, our profit dropped and dropped and dropped. Now, I didn't actually go to business school, but I'm fairly certain on the first day of the University of Florida Business School, they would probably tell you that if your revenue is going up and up and up and your profit is going down and down and down, you're probably doing something wrong. At FSU, that might be PhD level curriculum. <laughs> I don't know. 
Thankfully, my leadership team and I all went to the University of Florida, so we realized we had a problem. And we knew we needed to do something about it. So we took about six months last year to really talk about what can we possibly do. We studied a lot of theories, we studied agile software development, and we looked at a lot of different philosophies and how we could implement them into our company. And then we made some significantly drastic changes. These are changes not just to how we approach projects, but a change in philosophy to how our company approaches work in general. And here's what happened. We are now getting projects done 90% faster than we ever were before. 80% of our work now comes from our existing clients coming back and wanting to get more and more work from us. And we've had zero turnover of key employees this year. Here's the great thing about this. I believe that the practices and principles that we put into place in our company can also work for any of your companies or organizations as well. So what did we do? Like many service-based companies, we had pools of specialists within our organization. We, we had designers and software developers and project managers who were all necessary to work on projects together to get, our jobs, to get jobs done. And when a new project would come in the door, we would look at how busy everybody is, what's on their schedule, and we'd try to find people who could fit into that particular project. The problem with this way of working is that as you scale, it becomes completely chaotic. Your employees start to feel isolated. They start to feel like they're part of an assembly line. They're just siloed as part of the process. My leadership team and I decided that in order to get bigger, we were going to have to get smaller. Now, smaller for us did not mean laying off people. Smaller for us was taking these groups of people and breaking them up into dedicated teams. Now, teams are not a new concept in businesses. Some of you may have teams within your companies and organizations, but we did teams a little bit differently. Our teams are permanent teams, permanent dedicated teams that come in and work together. All members of the team stay together from the beginning of a project to the end of a project, and then that team moves together from project to project. Essentially, we took our entire company and broke it up into several small business units. To show you why this is such a unique approach, let's go back to construction. This is how a very simplified version of a project plan in the construction industry might work, right? So you would first have an architect come out and they're gonna, they're gonna do blueprints and then you may have the cement layers come out and they're gonna lay a foundation. At that point, you may have the plumbers come out and they start to lay some of the plumbing, et cetera. You have these specialists coming in and leaving at every stage of the project. If you've ever managed a project with a Gantt chart before, this is the type of project management that you're doing. We decided to take a different approach. We have these dedicated teams and we give them the list of tasks that need to get done for a particular project and we, let, and we have that team and the members of the team work on every single one of those tasks together. Now this may sound a little strange to you because applying this back to the construction world, I am suggesting that your architect, when the time comes, is gonna be helping to hang drywall and your electrician may be helping to put up the roof. But I will tell you that if you hire smart people, they will find amazing ways to add value at every single step of the process. And I believe that this is actually the most natural way for human beings to operate. Just look at what happens when there's a crisis. When a crisis occurs in our communities, it's all hands on deck. It doesn't matter your background or your job or where you are in society. Everyone wants to pitch in and help. They want to make the situation better. That's the type of spirit that we try to embody in our teams. And if you're successful about embodying this type of spirit inside your teams, you'll create an environment where job titles no longer matter because your employees are team members first and foremost. So we have these dedicated permanent teams working on projects. The next thing that we did was we allowed these teams to focus. Now this is almost unheard of in today's world of multitasking where there's distractions hitting us from every angle. And you know, typically service companies are juggling their employees between several projects. That's how we used to do things. But we sat back and thought about things. If I were to take one of you out to a basketball court and I were to put three basketballs in front of you, and I were to tell you, I need you to shoot all three of those basketballs through the hoop, would you pick all three basketballs up at the same time? Try to kind of go towards the hoop and, and throw them up there? 
Or are you going to pick up the first basketball, look at that hoop, focus, get a good shot, and shoot it through, and then move on to the second basketball? Why then, in our companies and organizations, do we do the exact opposite? Why do we saddle our employees with so many different responsibilities and goals and priorities that they have a difficult time advancing on any of them with rapid speed? So we have these teams, these dedicated teams that are now focused on only one project at a time from start to finish. The next thing we did was we organized their work into short bursts called sprints. For us, a sprint is a two-week period of time. And what that means is that as the team's organizing, they take the list of tasks or stories that they need to accomplish, and they choose the tasks or stories from that list that they believe they can get done to 100% completion within that sprint, 100% completion within two weeks. You see, it's now our philosophy that it is better to get just a few things done to 100% completion quickly than it is to start multiple things and having them all in various stages of completion. Now, by organizing, by organizing work into sprints and allowing the teams to be making the decisions, we're empowering them. There is a key thing I said when I explained how this worked, and that is that we allow our teams to take that list of priorities and determine which of those items they're going to be able to get done during that sprint period. We no longer have project managers who are dictating to the team's deadline dates and task responsibilities. Because we found that if you allow the team to come together, look at that list of things that need to get done, and then make their own decisions and commitments as to what they can get done in that sprint, you're going to get a lot better outcome, and you're going to have a team that's a lot more invested in the result. So we've got these dedicated teams. They're focused on only one project at a time, and they're working in these sprints. The next thing we needed to figure out is how are they going to work with their clients? You see, as many of you have probably experienced, when you work with a service company, whether it be an IT or an accountant or a construction company, your experience might feel something like that. This is the type of, of feeling you feel when you've had a project that has been lingering on for months at an end and, and you don't really know when it's going to get done and it slipped past deadlines and you call the vendor and you say, when are we going to get this done? And you don't get the feeling that they themselves even know when they're actually going to get it done. The truth of the matter is, they probably don't. Because unfortunately, they probably have their employees spread between 10 or 15 different projects at the same time, and they, they might be giving their employees time to the, to the project that's potentially paying the most, or the project with the client that's yelling the loudest at that moment in time. We decided that was no way to behave. We decided we were going to take this traditional way of working with clients, and we were going to flip it on its head. What we now do is we now put our clients in the center of our project teams. Now, I know not all of you have clients. This same philosophy works with whoever is primarily responsible for the project. The product owner, the stakeholder inside your company, put them inside the center of the project team. Putting them in the center of the project team builds incredible transparency. How is this done? We do it through a daily meeting called a stand-up. A stand-up is a 15-minute-a-day meeting at a scheduled time. It takes place each and every day without exception. During that stand-up meeting, the client attends the meeting. They can either come in in person or we do a conference call. And then every single member of the project team has an opportunity to speak. They stand up and they tell the client, here's exactly what I did over the last 24 hours. Here's exactly what I'm going to accomplish over the next 24 hours. And here are any roadblocks that are getting in my way. These meetings are incredible. Not only do they pro provide incredible transparency, but they're also a great opportunity for the team to collaborate and overcome challenges. Even if your organization doesn't deal with projects, I would highly recommend considering implementing these stand-up meetings within your company. If you have a small business, consider a 15-minute meeting every day where you get your whole staff together and you do what I just described. Larger companies can do this within departments. It's amazing the clarity this will bring within your organization to get everybody on the same page and working together to overcome challenges. So we've got these teams and they're focused on on only one project at a time. We're having these daily stand-ups with our clients. The last step that we needed to take was to build innovation and iteration into our process. You see, I believe in today's world of technological change that it is silly 
to think that you can sit down and write a rigid project plan and that project plan is actually going to represent what the best possible output of that project will be months later when the project is actually done. We now favor agility over rigid documentation. And if you work in the short bursts called sprints that I just described, it provides a perfect platform for this. Because every two weeks, once your team gets some of the tasks done to 100% completion, you can meet with the team and you can reprioritize. You can have a collaborative session where you can say, what did we learn? Where do we see this project going? How can we make this project better? Now let's reorganize our priorities and then the team will decide what they're gonna accomplish in the next two weeks. This brings in an incredible ability to innovate and iterate throughout your project process. So that was it. Those are the five things that we changed that produced those incredible results. We've got dedicated teams with a singular focus. They're working in short bursts with the clients at the center and innovating and iterating at every step of the process. I am so bought in to this philosophy of working that recently we rebranded re our entire company to be reflective of this. This is our new company logo. The five circles are symbolic of our five values, which represent five the five elements of our strategy, which I just shared with you. The interlacing aspect of the circles is representative of our project teams working together with the client in the center. Having just gone through a rebranding process, I can tell you how powerful it is to have a logo that actually tells what you believe in and actually tells part of your story. And if your organization doesn't have this, I would suggest that next time you go through a rebranding process that you take some time to think about what story your logo could tell. There is one other advantage to all of this, one success that is actually the greatest of all that we did not foresee when we started this process. And that is that if you have your employees work in this manner, it will reignite their passion for work. You see, when you take an employee and you put them on a team, you allow them to be part of a team, you allow that employee to focus, you allow that employee to build a deep relationship with the folks that they're, gonna, that the folks they're working with and the folks who the project is for. And you allow that employee to work in an agile method where they can innovate and iterate. Your employee really starts to care. They start to take pride in the work that they're doing. And you can see how much care they have in the end result that you're getting. The quality of work is outstanding. Most importantly, you can see how much that employee cares when they show up to your office every day with a smile on their face. And ultimately, that's what the circle strategy is all about. Thank you.